around the 6th century BCE. So it's giving you like an unsure answer. But what it's done in the background, what it's trying to do is put the Jews in place in the 5th century BCE. Now, if you do that, then everything is, is, is fair game. It's all go because like, OK, it's a possibility that these people were here because here you have this Greek, you know, historian, this traveler talking about the Jews, you know, so long ago. And it's pseudo. We don't know for sure if he said this. It's just what we found that he may have said in fragments that exist that could have been his or not. And this is from, I talked about Diodorus Siculus, who's talking about Hecateus. And anybody that's a real researcher has to understand that any information that we get, every single thing, I don't care if it's Josephus, I don't care if it's the, you know, the first century CE Catholic Church, anybody who's speaking about them is quoting Diodorus Siculus, period. And they getting that, he's getting his information via his fragments and information that he have from Hecateus, which is considered pseudo. So that's that's facts. That's the truth. There is nothing, nothing. They don't they didn't write any books. We don't have any paintings. We don't have nothing that's consistent with a group of people living during a certain period of time. Don't exist. We have it with everybody else. But when it comes to the biblical Jews, nothing. Now, outside the Bible, we know what we have. We have these black Jews that we find when we start going back. They were black. And this is why we saw all the paintings, you know, black Jews and black bishops or what have you. We know that. And this is why the black Hebrews are saying why they was black. And then you have to understand, you know, what all this means. It means if anything else had this type of background and history and information to it, we would immediately call it a fake. But because religion is surrounded by so much, you know, people are believing it because why would these people build churches? Or why would we have all this religious stuff going on if it's fake? Why would they do all this? What is, what is it about? And it's people who they have absolutely no clue what this is all about and how deep it is. You know, we grew up in church. We was raised going to church and we believe in this, you know, religion and God and so on and so forth. And why would these people lie? What is what is going on? And there's many reasons that you need to understand. And then another thing you understand is that just because you got one piece of information from one source about how we got here on this planet doesn't make that one source correct. It means you have a look at other sources. You haven't looked at civilizations that ex existed long before biblical religion who gave us similar stories and different stories that we can look at, you know, religion and see that they had to have taken from them. But if you believe the religion, then you're going to believe, actually, you're going to be confused because you can't believe the book when we don't have any proof about the book. But this is what most people do. They believe, well, the Bible says in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Or who was there to record that? Who was there? Remember, Moses dies, and then Moses is supposed to have wrote the five books, and he's dead and gone. How is he dead and still writing these books? You know, so there's so many things you have to think about. And who are these people to tell you what God said and did? And these people had nothing. We can't go back during the time of the Jews and find one building. We can't find one structure. We can't. How are they? How can these people tell you what God said and did? But we can't find nothing on these people. We can't even find a book that he supposedly inspired these people to write the manuscripts, whatever you want to call it. We can't find this stuff. So then we go into Egypt because, you know, at the end of the day, you know, I tell people I was raised in church. My uncle was Christian. He was a preacher. And I set out to prove the Bible was correct because I hated non-believers And I really was diehard Christian. And I set, I set out to prove it was real. This is not somebody who just jumped on YouTube, you know, I've been to these places in the Bible. I've been to every country in the Bible and I can show and prove this stuff. You know, I, this is what I do. And I'm not a person who's just out to try to make somebody look bad. So you got to understand, I desperately wanted it to be true. It broke my heart when it wasn't because it's like, now what? And that's why I'm successful today because I realized I don't have to pray and beg this imaginary God for success. I need to go get off my ass and go and get it. So it wasn't me just, you know, trying to be smarter than everybody else. So you got to be real with yourself and understand when you go and set out and you go and look for this information that you are doing your due diligence to yourself, you know, to your psyche. 
that you are actually looking for real truth and not what fits what you want it to fit. So as I was saying, we go into Egypt and what do we find? We find stuff that's older than what we see the Bible claims to have, you know, invented or came up with before what we find in Kemet. So the whole thing about the soul, you know, the Bible is supposed to be the first writings, you know, biblical religion is supposed to be the first on everything spiritual, according to it. But we go into sources that we know for sure exist and we find stuff that predates the Bible. So, of course, we got to ask questions. This is not about, like I said, people just trying to show you up, at least me, because if anybody, and I said this before, if a homeless person came up to you, you're a Christian, and a bum come up to you and say, God told me to tell you to give me everything you own to go seek him out in the desert until you find him. Your ass going to want proof. You ain't just going to do it. You're going to want proof. So that's what we are saying. Somebody is telling us this something that's impossible to us. So we're saying, okay, we're going to go look for the proof. Let's go look. And this is what we're finding. You can't find me anything biblical that predates what's in Kemet, what's in Egypt. We go in there and they put it in stone. So it will be no mistake. You can't erase it, you know, unless you chisel it, chisel it out, which is what they try to do in a lot of places. There's a lot of stuff that's missing in there, but we know it's there. We know everybody talked about this civilization. And then you have the fact that one, you go in the Bible, it's not talk about the pyramids. They don't mention it. They don't mention the Sphinx. They don't mention, you know, so many amazing things that's in Egypt in the Bible. And the Egyptians don't mention them. And the Egyptians, they mention everybody and had a name for everybody. There was thorough. There's no way if the biblical accounts were real that we wouldn't find it on the walls in Kemet. There's no way. We would find this stuff. And we would know that it's true because we would see it there. And people, when they don't say stuff, people just make up their mind about what they think they see. So for the people who believe that, you know, this is the Jews, no. We have wars with the Hittites, wars with the Hyksos. And we know the Hyksos actually conquered Egypt for a time and took the Egyptians captive for a time and ruled for a time. So the people you see in bondage, if you don't see Ramses, you know, bashing the skulls of the Hittites, a lot of them are the Egyptians themselves. But they describe these people as who they are, the Hittites. You know, they had a, a name for outsiders, foreigners, but no Body spoke nothing on Israel. So this is why, or Jews. So this is why we have this, you know, the Marian Patai Stella, and it's supposed to say Israel on it, and all these other Stellas that, you know, supposedly alluding to Egypt or leading to the, the Jews. But we have since found that a lot of these are forgeries. They can't be confirmed 100% to be what they say they are. And, you know, I've been to, you know, Cairo Museum and a few other museums. I've looked at a lot of these stellas. And I mean, come on. Anybody can chisel this stuff in and make it look like what they wanted to say. It's very easy to do. And this is this is what must have happened in a lot of these cases. But besides that, who's running the show? Who's controlling the research study? You know, where's the money coming from? What's the point of this? For them to say they found something that they believe goes back to biblical times, but they can't prove it. And this is what we have in just about every single case of you know, artifact dating before the fourth century BCE belonging to the biblical Jews. It's nothing. It's nothing. So there's something that you have to understand, and I'll leave it at this. Everything in this argument that's coming from the side of religious people is based on faith, period. There is no facts to back up Jesus walked on water. And as I said on Instagram, if Jesus walked on water, that means he could fly. And he probably would have flown his ass away from the crucifixion. Just that simple. There's no way you can prove that snakes and donkeys can talk. That Elisha had magical powers. That a bear mauled 40, 40 boys. Like if this is the guy you follow, you know, not even to get into all that. <laughs> but come on. Then you have scriptures that's talking about kidnapping little girls and killing little boys and eating babies and so on and so forth. And this is how you can tell who's actually reading the book, because I don't think any sane person would follow this if they actually read the book. And for the people who say God is good all the time and the Bible is nothing but a good book, they don't read the book. And the thing is, the reason why all these researchers is coming out and, you know, 
they're getting their money on proving this stuff is wrong because deep down inside they know it's bullshit. So when somebody comes up and say, I found, you know, a shard that has Paleo Hebrew on it, or I found something that goes to, you know, the Bible and it's Jehoiachin's, you know, tablets about his, you know, his measurements or what have you, which was proven to be false, by the way. Uh, yeah. The real research is like, man, I know the Bible bullshit. I know it's not real. I know I know damn no grown ass man survived three days in a big fish, you know. So I'm gonna go prove this wrong. I know this, I'm gonna make a name for myself. And this is what's happening in a lot of cases because common sense just trumps religion any day. And you gotta really use your brain and be real with yourself and look at, you know, logic, you know, logic. But when it comes to information, this stuff is based strictly on faith and people having faith and believing this stuff is real and they can't prove that it is and that's what it comes down to so i say to you you know you don't like me you don't like people like me you don't like my followers or anybody that's putting out truth and trying to put out the truth then if you come at us come with facts come with real information don't come with this bullshit we've been seeing for years i really do this i I'm, i do this and I know what's already been put out there because if it was real, I would be a Christian. I would be on here preaching the word of God instead of talking about the truth about it. So I know what's out. I know what's been out. They find a new, st new stuff all the time, new artifacts. They have yet to find more artifacts pertaining to the Jews in Israel than pertaining to the ancient Egyptians. Think about that. Way more artifacts found in Israel pertaining to the ancient Egyptians than the Jews. Why? Because there was ancient Egyptian territory and they ruled it. If the Jews did what they did, if the Israelites went out conquering, like the Bible says, we would find stuff. We would find so much stuff. We would find what we find in every civilization that went out and conquered. We don't find that with them. So for people who say, well, you know, God made it all disappear or God made the bodies disappear, how come they popping up and claiming to find little stuff here and there, you know, with writing on it? What is that? Then you have to completely forget that, you know, it's only supposed to be the Levites writing stuff. And then you're trying to tell me we have stuff that's written by the Levites when we find this stuff? You can't prove that. Then you have to discount the fact that, okay, we didn't have writings because we had an oral tour for millennia. So why are we finding these so-called writings and shards and so on and so forth? It just don't make sense. It don't make sense. So I leave people with that and, you know, do your research, be true to yourself and, uh, you know, make sure you're not here looking stupid over something that, you know, deep down inside you don't follow and you don't believe in and you don't read that book. Plain and simple. So thanks to everybody who been supporting and um, appreciate the support. Make sure you guys take advantage of the sale for the three days that is up for only $8 or 9 bucks. Appreciate you guys. See you next video.